Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor. I am Sanjay. We are learning Laravel 8 Framework Tutorial. This is our part number 28. Inside this video, we are going to start about the basic concept of models in Laravel and also we'll see that what about its member variables. And also guys, if you are looking up the blog articles of CakePHP 4, Code Igniter 4, MySQL, Laravel 8, Node.js, WordPress, then you must visit this blogging website. Inside this blogging website, we have several interesting articles with interesting blog topics. If I back to browser, this is the blogging website. Here we have several different different categories. If I scroll down, here we have the recently posted blog articles. You will see we have interesting blog topics. Back to the topic, so inside this video, we will see that what is model, how we, we create model and how basically we use the member variables of a model. When we have started learning all about Laravel, so as we know from that video that is a Laravel supports MVC pattern. MVC where M stands for model, view stands for view and C stands for controller. So M, the section of M is basically the model which is going to interact with the database. Every table in our database respective or associates a model. So when we create a model, it means by default we should have a table and this model class is going to interact with that. Inside Laravel, we have a command to create model class file and that is PHP artisan make model. Now if you back to terminal and simply type the command called PHP artisan to see the list of all available commands and inside this make option we will have make model. So when we run this command means PHP artisan make model it is going to create a new eloquent model class. We will learn about Eloquent and its relationships in the next videos. But for now, we need to know that how basically we can create a model and what are the available member variables we can use inside a model class. So when we run this command, it is going to simply create a model class file and this model should associate it with any respective table. By default, when we create model, it should be singular and the table name should be called plural. What I mean, back to slide, open a new tab. Let's say that we have a table with the name called users. But when we create a model class file of this table, then the model file name should be something called user.php or the class name the class name we have called user means the table name should be plural and the class name should be singular. By default, when we create any model class file like let's say user, employee, student, then automatically application understand that this class file should have a table in our database and that is of plural something let's say we have created employee model then automatically understandable point that is we should have a employees table let's say that we have a table something called let's say employees so when we create a model when we create a model the class name should be something called employee which is singular so in the same concept we will move but in some cases if we want to change the table name let's say that we don't have employees table in case of employees table we will have tbl underscore employees table so how we associate this third party table means the different type of table syntax with this model this is the concept we will understand by the help of model based member variables so first let's create a model so as we know inside our database we have a student and users so in the last video we have used a command called 
PHP Artisan Make Model and here we have passed the model file name as a student. So in the last video we have created that and the model files should be stored inside this models folder. This is the default pattern to save this file inside this directory. If you want to save inside different directory structure or you have created a different folder, you can store that. So by default, we will fi find all the created models inside this model directory. Go here. As we can see, we have a singular file name. Click on that. So here we have a class called student which extends model. So by default, this class is associated with a student's table of our database. But in some cases, if we have suppose a different table name, also inside this table, we can find the several informations inside this structure. That is, we have ID, which is by default a primary key, and also it is auto increment. Also, we have sub columns like created at and updated at. Because when we create migration and migrate inside our database, these columns are by default called ID, created at, and updated at. But by the help of models based concept, we can control all the informations of these columns. What I mean? Back to the Laravel documentation, click on documentation. Go here inside this eloquent ORM, click on getting started. You will find the complete documentation of model and its basic variables inside this document. So here we have defining models, scroll down. You will get all the definitions. So here we are creating PHP artisan make model and here we have make model flight. And also if we go again here, let's say that PHP artisan if we want to open help manual, so PHP artisan help make model and while creating model, as we know, we need to pass the name of the class, but inside this options, if we pass, let's say minus C or let's say hyphen hyphen controller, it is going to create a controller for that model. Also, if we want to create a factory file, we need to pass factory flag or minus F. For migration, minus M. Here we have the migration flag and so on. When we pass minus A or minus minus all, it means it is going to generate a migration file, setup file, factory file and a resource controller. What is resource controller? We will see in upcoming videos. But rest of the files called migration, setup and factory, we understood in the last videos. So when we create the command called php artisan make model student and when we pass minus minus all then it is going to generate all these files. Migration file should be stored by default inside this migrations folder. Factory, factories will, will go inside this factories folder, seeders will go inside this folder and the resource controller will go inside this HTTP controllers and here we will find all about the generated resource controller. Let's create a simple for example to understand PHP artisan let's say make model. Right now we don't have any table but when we create the migration, it is going to automatically migrate the employees table. So the model name should be singular. So PHP artisan make model employee. Next, I need to pass all here, which is going to generate a seeder file, migration, factory and a resource controller. Simply press enter. As we can see, model created successfully, factory created successfully. It has created a migration file and waiting to create the next file, I think a resource controller. And this is seeder and controller. So these all files are created back to a directory structure. So firstly, when we load that, we can see we have an employee controller, which is a resource controller. Inside this resource controller, we will find all these methods by default. So what is the rule and what is the use, we will see in the next videos. 
Next, we will have a model. Models will go inside this models directory and here we have the model. As we know, by default this model indicates all about employees table because this is singular and it is going to by default points to its plural part. Go inside this database, we should have a migration file and as we can see, this migration file is going to migrate a table or creates a table with the name of called employees. Inside this migration, these two lines are by default. The first line is going to generate a ID, auto increment, primary key, and this is going to generate our timestamp columns called created at and updated at. Go to factories. Here we will find employee factory which is pointing towards our model class file called employee and the employee is pointing towards our migration call employees table. Next we have the seeders and here we can find all about the details of employee seeder. So we understood about this basic command which is going to generate all our required files. Let's understand about the basic variables. The first basic variable is all about the table name. Let's say in our case, the table name is not something is students. In our case, let's say our table name is something. For this employee case, let's say we have the table name as TBL employees. So how we actually make understanding to this model file? If you go to models, employee so how we tell this employee.php file means employee class that we have a different table name so to, to tell that we have a member variable by specifying that member variable we may say that we have a different table if you back to the documentation for the different table name here we have the member variable called table so simply we need to create let's say protected simply define a table key and inside this we can pass our different table names so in our case if supposed we have a table something called employees so this is the thing what we have to pass the next let's say that we don't have the primary key as id means automatically the table names should be students by default, it will look the primary key as id and the timestamps value as created at and updated at. But we can control all these values. So first case about the table name we had seen. Now in the next, it automatically look about the primary key and auto increment as the id column. So to control the column definitions, Next we have the primary keys, let's say in our case the primary key is something different means different column. So we need to specify the primary key variable. Back here we need to create let's say protected. Here we will have called primary key and in the next we need to specify the column name. Otherwise if we don't have the any key inside this model then it column by default will be used otherwise if we pass here let's say we have something called student id or something we have let's say employee id imp id so this will be a primary key also in some cases if we want to create a string column let's say email or something a string value is a primary key by default the model will know that we have an id column which is a type of int but to tell that we have a string column which is a primary key we need to specify a next something called key type so here inside that protected here we have called key type and let's say that inside this primary key if we have this imp id as string data type so we need to tell our model that is we are using the string primary key as our data type so data type string value and here inside this first number variable we have passed our custom table name 
So these three variables we understood clearly. Now the next, let's say as we know that this id column is a primary key and also it is auto increment. Auto increment stands for when we insert any new row inside this table, then automatically our id will be generated. Something the value, let's say if we have the first row as id1, the second row automatically will inserts with id equals to 2. Next, id equals to 3. So if we want to make the auto increment feature for this id column as false means we don't want to insert the auto incremented value as the by default value for this id column, we can make it as a false. How we can specify? Simply, we have the next member variable called incrementing. Simply, we need to make it as a false value. So if I copy, go here and pasting it here. So simply this member variable telling this model that we need to specify imp id which is a type of a string or primary key but this time it is not auto incrementing. In the next as we know that this model also will find about the means the default timestamps value what we will get from the migration as created at and updated at because these are also the by default columns. When we want to means change the names, by default these are the names. So when we want to specify the different name, here we will have, if I scroll down inside this document, so this is all about the two constant. So if I copy, go here, pasting it here. So by the help of these constant variables, we can specify a different let's say column name for our time stamps values. In some cases also we want that the time stamp values should not be required because by default migration provides these columns but we don't want. So how can we remove? Simply either we can remove from migration if I press Ctrl B go to migration here we have the timestamps so when we remove or make comment it is not going to create any timestamp columns but the model is pointing out because inside this model we didn't tell that we don't have any our timestamp columns so we need to tell this model so for that we have the key called timestamps so inside this timestamps simply we need to pass the false value which is going to tell our model that we don't have any timestamps column. So these are the member variables. These are necessary when we work for the big projects. Because in some cases we have different different table names, we have different primary key, we have different key types and our timestamps values. So in the next video, we will see that how we can use the model based concept. Let's say we have a form. By the help of that form, we are submitting data and how we save our data by the help of model to our database table. So inside this video, we completed all about the basic concept of model, how we create and what are those member variables and what is its use. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.